we have here an 85 Volkswagen Rabbit convertible. And this car belongs to a long-term customer of mine. He's a diesel driver, but this is his uh, project car or his Sunday driver, so to speak. It's not a beater by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not a show car either. And um, he brought it to us. Uh, we've been servicing this car for a while. We did some brakes on it before and some hydraulics and a little miscellaneous stuff, but uh, he's been driving it with really bad shocks and struts on it. So we um, put shocks and struts on it, and it drives much better now. But um, as we were road testing the car, it quit running on us. We thought it ran out of fuel, so we um, I called up Cortland, and, and he brought... Once we got there and added fuel to it, it started right up and drove back to the shop. But uh, as it started and ran again, as it, after it warms up, it dies. We've reproduced the scenario of it uh, starting and running and then dying once it warms up repeatedly. And uh, we've been tr working on it for a few days, but when it does start and run, it runs really, really rich. Uh, it will, the tail... The emissions coming out of the tailpipe are obnoxious and will burn your eyes and um, after it runs that way for a while it dies. Uh, this is obviously a fuel related problem. Um, this has the uh, CIS or K-Jetronic uh, fuel injection system with the fuel distributor here. Uh, this is a late one that has a uh, frequency valve down there and an oxygen sensor. I don't know this system well other than um, reading the manuals and I do have the Bosch training manual on it and I've read it and I've watched all the YouTube videos and I know these older cars have a lot of rust issues in the fuel tank and you always have to be concerned that that rust has come up and passed through here and got into there and clogged off the injectors. Well, I've got the fuel filter off ain't really much filth coming out of it. It, it. it ain't perfectly clean, but obviously this fuel filter could be old. You can see some filth coming out of there, but no massive quantities of rust. Of course the fuel is clean because we did run out of fuel and put five gallons of new fuel in it. Okay, this thing starts up relatively easy. It's making some noise here, but that's the hood prop rod. I don't hold the hood prop rod, it rattles quite a bit, but uh, the car runs relatively good, let me turn the light on, and when it's cold, and as it's running, uh, eventually the car dies. Okay, I'm redoing this segment of the video because I uh, did a terrible job of explaining it, and I missed a significant portion of the video because I didn't push the record button. So here's what I got. This is the rabbit and it's got a running rich problem. It will start up and run just fine when it's cold but then once it gets warm it dies. And I, one of the first things I did was check pressure uh, on the CIS fuel injection system here. And you do this with this gauge here. Now what you should expect to see is about 25 psi on the gauge when you first start it. And the reason it's 25 PSI is because the warm-up regulator, which is down in that area, is dropping the control pressure. Control pressure is control pressure on the top of the fuel distributor. And that control pressure on top of the fuel distributor inhibits the, the airflow meter from raising up. And so the end result is the lower control pressure makes it easier for this to raise up, therefore injecting more fuel, making it richer for cold start. Now as the warm-up regulator warms up, it has heaters inside it and it's bolted to the side of the motor and it's behind the fans that gets heat on it. As it warms up, it raises that control pressure so that the it is a little bit harder for the vein to raise up and that leans the mixture just slightly for the uh, injectors to run normally during a warm running engine. Now to check full system pressure you close this valve and that allows 
um, no pressure to be bled off by the warm-up regulator and it shows you full system pressure that the fuel pump is capable of. Uh, as the vehicle warms up it should show approximately 55. Uh, let's start this car and get going with this test. As we started up there, it is a little bit lower than what's expected. And it's obviously warming up a little bit because the pressure's raising. And as this thing warms up, continues to warm up, it should end up at around 50. I think that the pressure increasing right now is showing us that the warm-up regulator is working. We're going to let this thing continue to warm up. But I guess the best idea would be to let the fan cycle on and then the, when the fans actually turn off, you know the engine is up to normal operating temperature. I did just notice we have a slight leak here, and that might have been the reason why we had extra low pressure when we first started it. You see that fuel leak there? I'll try and tighten that up. And that seemed to have stopped the leak. Okay, now that this is warmed up and the fans are cycling on and off, I just want to say that uh, earlier I said 55 PSI. I also said that the cold pressure should be about 25. Those are just general guidelines. As I look through my technical information, I am at 17 number was probably just fine, even with my fuel leak over there. But uh, as I'm seeing right now, 41 PSI or 42 PSI is probably just fine. And... One of the technical documents that I'm looking at is showing control pressure at 50 degrees Fahrenheit should be 17 PSI. That's almost exactly what we had based on the temperature of the shop. The temperature of the shop may have been 60, I think, at that point because it was cold morning and we turned the heat down at night, of course. Uh, and then at 75 degrees, it should be about 30 PSI. At 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it should be about 44 PSI. And warm control should be 41 to 46. This might be a little bit low if you compare it to 46, but I think it's in spec at 41 to 46. And then full system pressure, this document shows 65 to 75 PSI. So this is a good working fuel control system with regards to the warm-up regulator and the fuel distributor, but it's still running super rich. I, uh, sure, I'm certain that if we kept this thing running, any longer in here that I would die from carbon monoxide poisoning and the uh, uh, my eyes are burning and the car eventually stops running because it gets so rich. Let's check our uh, full system pressure. And as we close that valve, it did affect the way the engine ran a little bit. And it is showing about 70 PSI. I'll go ahead and open our valve again. I think the next step is to check the injector spray pattern, and we'll get to that next. If you could show the oxygen sensor real quick, the, the voltage on the oxygen sensor right now is uh, 0.76. That would be a rich condition. And the car definitely smells rich. There is a, uh, you know, it's burning our eyes. It smells bad. And uh, we're about ready to die. Carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm trying to demonstrate that the oxygen sensor is actually working. I have my thumb over this vacuum nipple here. And if you could go back over here, I'm going to introduce air. 
you see it goes low, so it's lean. And uh, now I'm closing it back off. But I can uh, force it lean every time, so the oxygen sensor is definitely working. And those cycles are me pulling my thumb off the nipple each time. But uh, so it is showing rich and it is rich. So the frequency valve should be compensating and showing, making it lean. And what we have is it showing 87%. That. It's showing 87%. Now it's fine. But uh, this car is obviously very rich. Uh, oxygen sensor is showing rich. Voltage is showing rich. Eyes are burning, so it is rich. Okay, we have duplicated the issue one more time. Had trouble getting it to do it. It wanted to run good. It was still running really rich, but it wanted to continue running without dying. But we have finally got it to act up again. So if uh, you can try and start it, Corlin. You see there it has a lot of trouble starting. And but once I pull this off, it fires right up. And I can use my thumb here to kind of regulate some extra air to it, leaning it out, and so it runs. But once I plug it off, it's gonna make a liar out of me this time. It's gonna keep running. Anyway, I duplicated it uh, several times. Each time I would pull this off, it would start, but when I put it back on, it would die and not run. Probably gonna have to pull the injectors out to uh, see that they're flowing and spraying. Okay, I pulled the injectors out for a spray pack test, and I have the camera on the number one and the number two injector. I'm going to jump power to the uh, fuel pump. You'll hear the uh, frequency valve buzzing. And then I'll lift up on the mass airflow sensor vane and um, we'll see how it sprays. Okay, first impression is that don't look too bad. But if I just barely lift up on this, you see a drip just come out of the number two, and if I'm just barely lifting up on it, you can see that very erratic spray pattern on the number two and the number one. And uh, the more I lift up, the better the spray pattern gets, although it's always off to one side. Uh, is this bad enough to cause it not to run? I don't know. Is it going to make it so rich that it runs bad? I have to say I think so. But this pe pattern here is just totally inappropriate, uh, especially on that number two. Let me zoom in on number three and four for you. There's the number three and the number four. And my light just quit. Well, we're going to have to hope this light is good enough. And that's what we see on the number three and the number four. Okay, we have bought new injectors and we've installed them there on the lines. And we want to do a similar check to show a comparison of how the spray pattern is on these compared to how the spray pattern was on the originals. Okay, we got the number four injector there, three, two, one. And go ahead and do it. What Cortland is doing, he's jumping power to the fuel pump and then he's lifting up on the mass airflow sensor. Ready? Yep. You can see there, there's a fine mist coming out of all of them. This number three isn't quite perfect. 
it has some like line spray out of it but uh, ten times better than what it was before I want to thank Thomas XOVCDS some of his videos really helped me to diagnose and fix this car among other information also but this rabbit is now running great we are hooked into the oxygen sensor and you see it fluctuating above and below 0.5 volts which means it's in fuel control and I'm going to change this to measure the duty cycle of the frequency valve okay I back probed into this connector and that tells us the duty cycle is the frequency valve changing my meter to AC and pushing this twice and our duty cycle is at about 58 and let me get my allen wrench so I'm just going to reach inside here with my Allen wrench. And then I'm going to adjust it where it shows 45. And now I'm showing 45 and that's where I'm going to leave it. into my face so I can smell whether or not it's rich and it is not but I think we can tell that already because we monitor the voltage on the oxygen sensor. We we'll call this a fixed car. Okay it's been fun revisiting the CIS k Jetronic fuel system on this. The uh, got it to run real good. The customer also really loved this car because uh, we did a whole bunch of shocks and struts on it first and the uh, uh, running bad and the rich problem actually started while we had the car. But it's running good now. I want to thank Thomas from XOVCDS on his videos that uh, helped refresh me on this. I would like to suggest that everybody who has a CIS uh, K-Jetronic fuel system read the Bosch training manual on it and watch the YouTube video uh, actually put out by Bosch training on it. Uh, really good stuff. But if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. And if you want to contribute to the continued production of these videos, Visit my website at www.kansascitytdi.com and find the donate icon.